Good morning, everybody. Come on in here. There's a lot of seats. We have an auditorium for thousands of people. I love Facebook Live. It, it helps us to get our day going. I'm running a little late today, and I have a funny story to tell you why. I have a funny story. Yep, and I'll wait till everybody gets in here and everybody gets settled down. Get your coffee, get your tea, get whatever you need. I got my hairs did yesterday, as Michelle used to say, and I'm good for another month. Yep, good for another month. So everybody get on in here and please share our videos. Yes, I didn't start any music this morning because I was running late. <clears throat> okay, folks. We can do this. When we hit 200, we'll get started. And I think 200 is, I don't know what that number is because that's not how many people are watching. It's not how many people are watching because we're watching a whole lot more than that. A lot more than that are watching. Same thing happens on, on Scott Adams' podcast. Yep. Okay. So yesterday, Leanne and I, when she went with me to get a haircut. So I picked her up at her house and we went a back way to get to, to Hendersonville. And I took her in downtown Hendersonville and showed her all the cute little shops. And we went to my beauty shop and then we went to another store and then we hit some farmer's markets. Well, it wasn't really farmer. Well, it's farmer's markets owned by the farmer. It's not a group of farmers coming in. It's just a wonderful place to, so we bought veggies and she's feeding us tonight. So we found the most amazing blackberries you have ever seen. Blackberries that were this big and Robert made a pie. It is the most beautiful pie you have ever seen. So yesterday I gathered up stuff to take with me so that I could do our three o'clock tea time from Teresa's backyard at the beauty shop. There's a table and chairs out there and Leanne sat out there and was doing something and we went out there and did a quick little tea time because we wanted to go have fun. We wanted to go have fun. And so we did a quick one. I pulled out the the little slip of paper yesterday morning from our teapot. And then I'm ready to go, excuse me, for this afternoon. Coffee's getting to me this one. This We're pulling it out of the trusty old owl this afternoon at 3 o'clock. And we're going to Leanne's for dinner. I don't know what's going on with everything so uh, if it slowed down I think there was a problem so this morning I got in here and I had no microphone <coughs> pardon me I had no microphone I couldn't find my microphone it wasn't hanging where it usually hangs on this little I have a there's a a post right here and I keep it hanging right there it wasn't there and I'm thinking okay what did I do with the microphone and then I remembered I put it in my hot pink tote bag that I took with me to the beauty shop there it was it was in the beauty shop oh my I I've got questions over here I gotta go get the questions hold on just a second everybody hold on I gotta go get questions Did you miss me? Did you miss me? I gotta put my microphone back on. Here we go. There we are. Okay, so I, I couldn't find my microphone and then I found it. And by this time it was seven minutes after 11. <laughs> so it's craziness this morning, but hey, I've had my coffee. I'm much better now. 
So we've got questions to start the day out. Liz sent them to me bright and early this morning. I have accidentally printed them out three times. But I have questions. Okay. So today is Thursday, our question and answer day. And I used to do the show at two o'clock in the afternoon, but then that runs too close to tea time. So we've just decided to do it at 11 o'clock. And the first question is, I am having a cookout slash barbecue in two weeks. I'm hoping it's more of an outdoor party, but I'm nervous because I'm not sure how it will play out with the weather. Well, if you think it's going to rain, it will. You just can't, you can't operate that way. You just can't do it. You can't do that you, to yourself. So plan on it being outside, but you got to get the main areas of your house in order. You got to get your kitchen clean because nobody wants to eat food from a dirty kitchen. You got that? It would just turn people off. So your kitchen's got to be clean. Your living room where people come into the house or from the back of the house, if you're having a, a backyard barbecue, you've got that area has to be clean and your bathroom has to be clean. So I'm not sure how it plays. My house is not up to par. Well, what's par? Par is average. Par is average. So get rid of the clutter that's sitting on the flat surfaces. Do away with the clutter and your house is gonna look clean. And then all you gotta do is grab your feather duster and run around the house in feather dust and get your carpet sweeper and sweep, get the dog hair and stuff off the floors and your house is gonna look good enough. Good enough. Um, don't start painting the inside of your house because you're gonna have an outdoor barbecue. But your bathroom needs to be clean, your kitchen needs to be clean, and your living room, living area where they would walk through to your bathroom, unless you got an outdoor to toilet going to sit in the yard, which would be disgusting for a barbecue. Do you have a suggestion on how to be party ready without feeling overwhelmed? You got two weeks. You got two weeks. So I would crisis clean the house and then I would keep it clean. Keep it clean, doing your routines every day and start cooking. You can, if you're going to have baked beans and potato salad and all kinds of stuff like that, you can get a lot of things done ahead of time and not have to wait to the last minute because waiting to the last minute actually makes you even more crazy. So please don't wait to the last minute to get ready. Get your house clean. Do crisis clean. Now crisis cleaning is real simple. Do 15 minutes in the kitchen. Set your timer right here. Set your timer for 15 minutes and spend a solid 15 minutes in the kitchen. Start with a sink full of hot soapy water and an empty dishwasher and get started. Wipe down your counters because if you're gonna cook, you got to have a clean kitchen. It's one of the things that drives me nuts. You can't cook in a dirty kitchen. You got to have it clean. Then spend 15 minutes in your living room. Start picking up and putting things away. Get you play a reverse scavenger hunt. You got stuff in your living room that doesn't belong there. Pick it up and put it away. Set your timer for every 15 minutes and then then just grab something and go put it where it belongs. Then spend 15 minutes cleaning your bathroom. Scrub your toilet so it doesn't embarrass you. Uh, wipe down under the rim. Get some cleanser if you have to. Get it smelling good because a smell good bathroom sort of sets the tone for the rest of the home. If your bathroom smells bad, it's gonna, it's gonna run people away. So crisis clean your house right now today and keep it clean for the next two weeks if you can do that you can do anything and then you just need to focus on cooking and cooking is the fun part that's that's like therapy to get ready for a big event cooking is the fun part so <clears throat> don't start dreading it's gonna rain you're gonna set the tone for your party 
you got to get this part of the house in order. Now, the women kind of like to be inside, helping you with cooking and getting dishes out. You can set all your dish, all the dishes, all the things you need. You can do this. So don't get so caught up and it gonna rain and setting yourself up for failure. Get your house in order right now. You can do it with a little crisis cleaning to help you. And if you need to do it a second time, do it a second time. But the most important part of this whole hour of crisis cleaning is resting after you do three segments. Kitchen, living room, bathroom, then rest. Kitchen, living room, bathroom, then rest. And then that 15 minutes that you're resting, make a list of things that need to be done. You can use your control, your holiday control journal to plan a party. And you're planning a party. So make your menus, know what you're going to cook. You know, is it going to be burgers and, and brats on the grill or is it going to be ribs, whatever. We got a lot of recipes on our website. Leanne has a ton of recipes on saving dinner. You can do this. You can do this. So sit down. A little planning today will get you started and you'll have something in your hot little hand that tells you what to do next. Somebody asked a question about where are the podcasts? The podcasts are, are lots of different places. We have a whole section of podcasts on our website. Scroll down to the very bottom of our website and you'll see Fly Lady TV or Fly Lady Radio. Click on either one of those. It takes you to our podcast. We have a crisis cleaning po podcast. We have a weekly home blessing podcast. We have lots of things we can do. And they're on YouTube. They're on our, our website. They're on um, Facebook. And they are on BitChute. So we got four places that hold our, our podcast. Can we do a pampering live video again soon? I really enjoy it. Well, we might do that soon. I'm not going to make any promises because it cuts in to my evening time with my sweet darling. But I might do it. It's, it won't be long before he'll be, uh, he'll be having um, his philosophical society meetings. And... <clears throat> It's a Monday night and before, I think it's the first, it, it'll be happening soon and we'll do it then. Okay, so I am drowning in laundry baskets. Laundry baskets? Okay, this is, this is going to be good. I can complete it all except I have no motivation of putting it away. What do you suggest? Okay. You have too many clothes in the drawers where the clothing belongs. Yep. You got too many towels in your linen closet or in your bathroom cabinet. You've got too many clothes in the drawers. You got too many clothes in the closet and you have no place to put them. So that's why you're dreading it. Today is August the 1st. I want you to clean out one, my blush isn't right, I can see it. <laughs> I want you to clean out one drawer for each member of the family. One drawer for each member of the family. Okay, everybody, I wanna see a show of hands. Thumbs up, this is a thumbs up. Give me thumbs up. Today's the first day of our brand new habit of doing a load of laundry a day. How many of you have already done a load of laundry today? There they are. Look at those thumbs up. Good job, everybody. Let's keep this laundry going. Now, the reason you hate putting away clothes, number Number one is because you don't, you've got too many clothes in the drawers and you have no place to put things. So you're living out of the laundry basket. <coughs> so 
You're going to clean out one drawer for each person in the family. You got it? One drawer for each person. Or you're going to clean out a little section of hanging clothes. And then what you're going to do is as a load gets done, as one load gets done, now the laundry has five parts, sort, wash, dry, fold, and put away. And until you do all five parts, you've not finished with the laundry. So when you get through folding and you have these nice little stacks, you need to go put those away right then. Do not pile them up on your washer and dryer or on a table. Put them away. Put them away. Well, you're, somebody said, called themselves lazy. I, I don't, no, you cannot do that. You are not lazy. You're not motivated is an issue. And when you've got a cleaned out drawer, you can get it done. So I want everybody right now while you're listening to me, be bossy. I want you to go clean out one drawer for one person in your house. Just one drawer, one drawer. And when you're talking about ironing, you're piling on right now. We're just trying to get laundry done. Now, the reason you need to iron is because you're not drying your clothes properly. You're drying them too hot because we want to get it done as fast as possible. I dry my clothes on delicate and it doesn't set it doesn't set the wrinkles. And a lot of clothes don't even need to be dried. You can take, like I have on a linen top right now, you can take this linen top and stretch it from left to right on a bias, that's a diagonal, and it will pull all the wrinkles out and hang it up. Hang it up on a hanger, and you can do it hanging on a hanger, and you never have to iron again. I never iron unless I get a little pack, the, the placket gets wrinkled. It gets turned wrong way. I iron that occasionally, but you don't have to iron. Hang things up. when The reason wrinkles get set is because you leave them in the dryer. And you leave them sitting in the dryer, getting cold and wrinkled. So stop doing this. You're making more work for yourself. And you're calling yourself lazy because you have not tried to save yourself a problem. Well, it uses less heat. Delicate uses less heat. So I don't know how long it takes. I go down there, put another load in, and I take my clothes out one item at a time and restart the dryer. One item at a time and restart the dryer. So you might have too many laundry baskets and you may need to find a new use for laundry baskets. And in my new book, let's see, where is my book? There it is. The Chaos Cure. We talk about laundry. We talk a lot about laundry in here because some people don't know how to do laundry. And I, delicate shirts, hang them up wet. Yep. And all my linen stuff, I hang it up wet. How often should I clean windows? What tool is the best to clean them? Well, sometimes you might need to do it every day if you have puppies that dig in, dig holes in the front yard, in the garden and then come and scratch on the door. I got a muddy toe print, paw prints on the door right now. When you see dirt, get rid of dirt. And it's just as simple as wetting a purple rag, which are on BOGO right now, by put one set in your cart and we'll send you another set for free. Uh, wet it and just walk around the house and wipe things. Have it in your hand and walk around the house and wipe things. In two minutes time, you will have wiped away a lot of dirt and dust. And it's fun. It's really fun. Just 
you got a tool, it motivates you. You're not lazy. You are motivated when you got a purple rag in your hand. Okay. Can you please explain the zones? Well, let me get a calendar out. So it's August. Zone one starts August 1st. See? August 1st. But this part of the week was July. That was zone five. So we have two zones in one month, one week right here because the because the first fell on a Thursday and it will go to the end of the week and then the next week starts zone two. The first full week in the month is zone two. The third full week in the month is zone three. That's, this is the kitchen. This zone one is the entrance, the front porch and the dining room. Zone two is the kitchen. Zone three is the bathroom and another room that we pick. We picked last month, we picked our office. Zone four is our master bedroom, our closet and our master bathroom. And then here we are, we're gonna have a whole week in zone five at the end of August. So this, we tell you every week what zone we're in, we have missions for that zone and it all works together. If you don't think about it too hard, you don't have to, I send it out in the flight, in the flight plan every night. It tells you what zone we're in. And when you get the sneak peek, it tells you the whole zones for the next month. So don't, don't think too hard on it. Just follow our missions. If you do your zone work, which are the missions that come out, you're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. And I lost my questions. Okay. Here we go. How often should I accomplish? Oh, back to zones again. Back to zones. Back to zones. Zones, there are stickers for zones. People want to know, why don't you put the zones on the calendar? Because it's a calendar. It's a calendar. A regular old calendar. But it's big enough for your family. And we have arrows that tell you what zone you're in in our sticker kit. So get the sticker kit when you get the get the count get the calendars. How often should I accomplish the detailed cleaning? Okay, you're thinking too hard again. You're making it hard on you. We do do one mission a day. That's detailed cleaning. Now, occasionally, when you see dirt, you need to take care of it. I mean, we get a fine, a fine little dust that will cover our furniture and stuff. It's crazy. We have a place where the dog likes to go and she gets covered in dust and comes in and shakes. She's like a little, uh, is it Schroeder on peanuts that was a little dust cloud? Um, I don't know. I never read peanuts as a kid, so... But you can't think too hard about it. You're going to do the mission. You're doing detail cleaning. That's all it is. Pig pen. Okay, thanks. Are there separate emails for my homeschooling information? Yes. Yes, there are. What I want you to do is go to our homeschooling section. Tammy does separate emails. for. You'll still get the same regular emails, but there is a specific e email just for for homeschoolers and go to our homeschooling section on our website it's in the carousel you'll see a blackboard or a green board I can't remember which it is and then click on that and there's a join button there's a, a way to join from that and when you do that it takes you out of all the other it takes you out of the other list so you don't get double emails so if you'll do it the way I'm telling you. You won't get overwhelmed with double sets of emails. I mean, all you got to do, Sue, is put a question in here. Liz will grab it. Or you send a, uh, at the bottom 
of our Ask Fly Lady question, there's a link to send an email. We, we give you lots of ways. Or you can just email flylady at flylady.net and put Ask Fly Lady in the subject line. So get signed. If you're planning on homeschooling this fall, there's a lot of things you need to do beforehand. You can't just start homeschooling as much as you think you can because each state is different and there's a lot of rules you have to jump through unless you've homeschooled before and you already have a school established. Uh, how many towels do you su suggest a family of four have? I would say two towels per person. And then you need a couple of extra towels for guests. So you might need four extra towels if you have a couple come vis visit you. And, and then some people like to color code their towels. So mommy gets pink ones. Daddy gets green ones. Um, Robert has green ones. I have yellow ones. So we each know our towel. And, and get some command hooks some great big command hooks and put them on your bathroom wall so each person can hang their towel from the hook and they can dry between, between showers. So, our entire linen closet is filled. I would like to declutter some. Yes, you can declutter some. And if you have one hanging up and one in reserve, then you've got two, so that gives you plenty of time to do the laundry. So you can cull down the towels to just, you know, get your favorite towels out, and then you can take the towels to uh, Humane Society, you can give them to your kids who need towels, set up a hope chest for, for kids who are gonna be going out on their own, color code, yeah, uh, the color coding towels for kids, that way they know their favorite color. And you can get a set of towels for about $10 on Amazon. And this time of year, there are lots of sales going on because kids are going back to school. So if you'll get rid of some towels, you'll have room in that linen to turn that linen closet into a pantry. Leanne's got an email about that. I need to probably grab that. I'm a teacher on summer break. I'm catching up on my homework while on break. You can't catch up. So you can't play catch up. It's just not going to happen. You just have to jump in and keep doing things with your routines. When I go back to school in September, I know chaos will start over. Any suggestions? Well, quit saying chaos is going to start over because you're going to make it happen. You've got to have faith in yourself. You have got to have faith in yourself. You can't allow your fear to overcome you. This is what happened when I was growing up. We would go a whole week and not do anything in the house. And then on Saturday, we were forced into indentured servitude pretty much that we had to clean all day or we couldn't go anywhere on Saturday night. So, if you want to get your house in order, you're not playing catch up. You have to establish routines. If you don't establish routines, your, your life is going to fall apart. You've got to be on automatic pilot. And you can't give up before the school year even starts. You can't give up. You can't expect this to happen. You've got children in your family. You have to set the tone for your family. And if you're not showing them how to create habits and routines, this is the one thing that a school teacher did for my son when he was in the sixth grade. And his name was Mr. Barry Bargery. And their class was a self-contained class. They didn't get to change classes like other, uh, other people in the junior high school because it was just across from the principal's office and he didn't want all that chaos. So Mr. Barry taught the kids how to establish habits. So if they got, and how to utilize every minute of the day. So if they got through with their, their, spelling homework 
they had a routine to their spelling homework and they could get ahead all they wanted to. They could get ahead in, with their spelling homework all they wanted to. And if you got through with your homework, you could start on the next week utilizing the habits of, of doing that. You could read ahead. You could answer questions because it was establishing habits and taking advantage of some free time that they had in class while other people were still doing their homework. So getting things done and seeing a need for something to be done next and being on top of things, being in project mode. I got some criticism about my little projects. Are you living in the projects? If your mind went there, you're probably a racist. <laughs> Isn't that what they all say? Okay. I live with my in-laws. We share the kitchen. How can I get them involved in leaving the sink shiny once it's done? I always wake up to dirty dishes and do not want to come across as rude to them. Shine the sink when you get through with it. Empty the dishwasher so there's a place for dirty dishes to go. If there's not a dishwasher, be thankful that they're putting the dishes in the sink. Quit picking fights. You can't say something. It's not your house. But you can do something. You can empty the dishwasher and you can quit whining about it, to your, even to yourself. Just take care of the dishes. If the dishwasher is full of clean dishes, empty it and put the dirty dishes in it. You have got to set the tone. Even though it's not your home, you've got to do it in love because they're giving you a place to live. Be thankful and just do it. Quit whining about it. What's the best way to clean the feather duster? You don't have to clean it very often, about once a year or if you got it, get it into really dirty, greasy dust, you might have to clean it. A drop of baby shampoo or Dawn dishwashing liquid, just something really gentle on your hands will work. And then just put it in a bucket and swish it around gently and then massage it a little bit and rinse it. And then you can either blow dry it and fluff it up or you can um, just let it dry naturally and then you can steam it with um, a, a tea kettle. And that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Do you have any tips for disabled people? Standing on my feet too long really bothers me. Well, I don't know what too long is. I don't know. You know, when, when um, we've had testimonials from people who couldn't stand but more than a minute, but she got her sink shined and she would start increasing the time she could stand like, up to two minutes and by the end of a summer she was able to go purchase her children's curriculum for for their homeschool year so she you just have to pace yourself you just have to pace yourself and build up your stamina if you have plantar fasciitis that is causing your feet to hurt I have a good exercise for you this has saved my life. I do it every night. It's part of my before bed routine. When I get in the bed, I do this every night. And here's what it is. Say, this is your foot. I take my toes and I bend them back and hold it for a count of 10. Now what that does, it stretches this, this um, fascia that's here. Now fascia is a big deal. It holds our muscles together, but if it gets too tight, if it gets too tight, you'll get plantar fasciitis and bone spurs in your heel because, but you got to gently hold it, hold a stretch for a count of 10. And I do it on both feet, both feet. And I, in four years I have healed my plantar fasciitis. Yep. Four years it's healed. But you just have to pace yourself a little at a time. Just a little at a time. So do not give up. Because you can only stand for a little time. I don't know what your little time, but 
our method, you're doing 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, 15 minutes in the evening. You're not standing for a solid 45 minutes unless you need to crisis clean. And then you may need to do five minutes, five minutes and five minutes, but you can get this crisis cleaning done. Yep, you can do it. Well, I think that's all my questions. Yep. So a lot of people having barbecues coming up. We have Labor Day coming up in September. We got a whole month to plan for a big Labor Day celebration. And we just need to start planning. Start planning and quit beating yourself up. And you teachers out there who are getting ready to start school, some of you have already started school, don't give up when school starts. I know you have a lot to do, but the house, and I'm going to fuss at you right now. If you're a school teacher and you go to school with a messy house, you need to rethink your occupation because if a homeschool teacher has a messy kitchen, I'm going to say the same thing to her. You can't teach your children if your house is not in order because you're not setting the right example for them. You can't. You have to get your house in order so that you can be all that you can be to those children. And it is amazing when you do your routines before you leave the house, you're gonna love coming home. If you get something in the crock pot before you leave in the morning, that's one less thing you have to do when you get home. All you got to do is set the table and get dinner on the table. And you have time to spend with your family. So if your school, if, you're, if your house is a disaster and you're trying to be a teacher, you got you to gotta get your house in order. You really have to do this. I say it to homeschoolers. And I've said it to homeschooling audiences. You know, they wear t-shirts that say, uh, forgive, forgive the mess, we homeschool. Well, I don't believe that. I believe you can homeschool and you can have a clean house. I believe you can teach public school and have a clean house. You just have to establish simple habits, string them into routines, teach your children to do this. Teach your children to teach to do this. Simple habits. When you get to school, you sit down at your desk and you get ready to learn. You clear things away. A clear desk is an open mind. When you got stuff on your desk that's getting in the way, yep. So you can do this. Yep, you can. Well, I love you all. I will be back here at 3 o'clock this afternoon. We're going to be pulling something out of our wise old Al. Yep. And I will see you later. I love you all. Bye.